to have in the facilities and what we have. Um, here to do a to do a blending session that's a redo of a of a previous blending session is always such a joy because it's the ultimate the end of what a winemaker gets to do. It's purely artistic of taking the different cultivars that you have. I mean, it's artistic all the way through the process, but then taking the different flavors that you have and the different grapes and then mixing them together. And then so we started out in this process was a little bit different because start out by having Annika and Mike come out and her parents came out and we tasted through a lot of the different cultivars that we grow. So in the Livermore Valley, we're farming Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec, Tempranillo, Trigo Nationale, Trigo Francesca, Suzelle, Marsan, Roussan, Viognier, Sauvignon, Sauvignon, Grenache, Graciano, Orange, Muscat, Muscat, Canelli, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Noir. No, Syrah. Petit Syrah. Petit Sarah. Sarah. Sonia Blanc, Sonia Nebbiolo, Barbera, San I don't know if I said those. So it's an incredible range. And the beauty wow. of this project was to do nothing but make a wine that Annika was into. So wow. we went to the That's a fun starting spot. So, so I just got all sorts of different cultivars. And you take a cultivar like Chardonnay, where you can make a lot of different styles from a really tart, crisp Chablis through an oaky, rich barrel fermented Chardonnay, and laid out the line. And that sort of sets the precursor for some of the wines we're going to taste tomorrow from the 08 Chardonnays as the potential next wine that's coming out. And then, so we tasted a bunch of different whites and then a bunch of different reds from Tempranillo to Petit Syrah to Syrah to Cabernet and really focused in on the type and style of Syrah that we grow in the Livermore Valley. And so narrowed it down to Syrah. Fast forward to, what was it, probably four months later and I just come off of the mountain and there's a tradition in the wine industry which is that the marketing department always loves is that a harvest <laughs> beard. So from when the first grapes come into the winery to when the last grapes, you don't shave as a winemaker, it's just sort of tradition. And I was living this tradition at the time and so ended up, and it was up in Seattle, and so I was just off a plane from a ski trip, looked a little grizzly out of fish, but, yeah. 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 but I had the wine samples that we had previously talked about, which was a Syrah and a Livermore Valley Cabernet, and just coincidentally, tasting through the wines, a Livermore Valley Cabernet that we farm to a great level and it always makes it into a nice Cabernet that we do is called Carolyn's House because it's that vineyard right below the deck at Carolyn's House that's right off of the tea box, or excuse me, right off of the practice screen. So it's another fun little coincidence that it happens to be right on the golf course, but that wasn't, we didn't set out to make that happen, set out to make the best wine with Syrah and a Syrah that we chose, and then Cabernet as a good blending tool to bring in the structure of the Syrah. Is that fair so far? So far. <laughs> <laughs> So then I come in, and it was it was a, there's a little bit of a it was a little bit of a comedy of errors on my part, and then I forgot the graduated cylinder, which is the key part because you have to measure, obviously. So I had to call down to room service, and just, what what hotel can have a graduated cylinder? <laughs> so I ended up with a measuring cup, which is fine. All you need is an accurate measurement, and, and then the wines were a little bit cold coming off of the airplane too, so we had to do a little warm up, and so it actually broke the ice a little bit because we got to sit and wait for the wines to get there and the wines to open up a little bit. Am I telling a true story? You were sitting there. Right. <laughs> and then, but then, then we started off with the wines and we actually started in this order, in the, the order that the wines are out there, where it was a Livermore Valley Syrah, which had sort of this beautiful fruit flavor, plus Syrah can also have a gamey note to it. So it sort of has that, like, like that you'll get from smoked, from smoked meat, smoked boar, venison, just sort of that little meaty note that can come through. Yes, sir. Is that the wine on the left? That'll be the wine on the left. So that's the Syrah, which is the foundation of the blend that we put together. And then the next two are Cabernets. First is a Livermore Cabernet, which has a, a great tight tannin structure to it. And so, but you can just feel it like it's a young wine that you know will give aging potential to the wine as a whole. And then the Napa Cab has a little bit more roundness to it. So our goal, you agree? Yeah. Uh, got, got, got the look from, got a look from Carolyn as she was smelling through the wine. She was probably formulating her blend in her head. Um, and then so then the Napa Cabernet to sort of round out some of those tannins in there. And then so we literally started at putting 75% Syrah in and then 25% of one cab and then 25% of the other cab. And then you sort of move those in next to each other and see how the flavors and the tannins all work together. Still doing okay? 
perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then so so with that, we put our blend together, and so now you all have the opportunity to sort of enjoy the same experience that Annika and I have, and taste the first three, taste the first one, or blah, 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 taste the first three wines, the Syrah, and then the one Cabernet, and then the next Cabernet. Now, rules of engagement. <laughs> If it says Cabernet or if it says Syrah on the label, what percent of Syrah do you have to have in there? 75 percent. So that's one rule as you're getting into blending is a 75 percent Syrah. And the next, it has to be what percent Livermore Valley fruit if you're going to put a Livermore Valley appellation on it? 90. 85. 85. So those are two rules. So the Napa Cabernet can only be as much as 15 percent and the uh, Syrah has to be at least 75. So taste of the three wines, we're going to get some bottles and put them on the table and literally have the graduated cylinder here working off of 100 tends to be a good number. So if you want to go 80 <laughs> <laughs> I'm working off 100, so you can just throw in 80 mils to represent 80% of the Syrah and 20 mils or 80, 10, 10. Play the game. Anna and I will walk around and we'll take it from there. Does Anna want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, um, we've covered a lot of things. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm very proud to be here. I think I pulled down the range, and we've had a lot of fun in the process of making this wine. And uh, with Carl's expertise, it's, you know, I've learned a lot. And when we started, it was, you know, what do you like? I would say, I like red. And I said, okay, well, red. <laughs> like you heard, I mean, it was 30 to 40 different uh, varieties out there. So uh, he's taught me a lot about the different flavors. And, and, and so forth, and uh, it's just fun to see, you know, the progress that we've made, you know, it's a really amount of elimination. We started here, and then just, I told him what I like, and uh, he understand kind of my explanation, we moved, you know, we narrowed it down, and, and here we are, you know, to three, and uh, that's really what it took, you know, when we in Seattle. Uh, but funny enough, uh, the way this turned out is, uh, maybe I shouldn't give up the blend yet, but, um, <laughs> When we talked about a Syrah, because I liked you know, the complexity of it and the fruitness, and it was just, you know, it was just very, very good. And seventy five percent of it, um, and I had seventy two wins on LPJ. Uh -huh. So we were blending in October, I believe, and I had five more tournaments, and uh, my goal was to get to seventy five because I thought that would be perfect, seventy five percent Syrah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the ten percent was ten majors. <laughs> which I had to cover, so that's good. <laughs> and then the 15% was 15 years on tour. Wow. So it was already coming together, and uh, <laughs> it was just kind of a natural thing. And then we, and, and when we finally had the blend, it was uh, 10 minutes past three, and you know, in Europe, it's 15 10, so yeah. it all <laughs> came together. So you're a numerologist then, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I've got numbers, but, uh, I'll come to you. Yeah, mainly <laughs> 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 so we have more uh, more wines to come, so we have more numbers to use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are there, I guess I notice on here that the that the Napa and the Livermore are those going the other way probably. So it'll be the the Syrah from Livermore, the Syrah from Livermore, and then the Napa Cab and then the Livermore yeah. Cab. Okay. Yeah. So the next big number is 2009 for you, right? Yeah.